Biddulph Grange Garden is run by the National Trust and it's one of my favourite National Trust gardens. As usual, there's a shop, a garden and a tea room. What's nice is they've given quite a lot of thought for activities for children and young adults. Here you can make a wand. You might also find a bargain, although I would suggest buying these on the way out rather than carrying them round. The entrance path leads to the main house, which is actually now divided up into luxury apartments. This part of the garden is private, but you can see it from the path. We decided to start our tour in the tea room because it was lunchtime. There's a variety of food on offer and hot and cold drinks. The pricing is not cheap, but reasonable. I had a Cornish pasty, a hot chocolate. I also had a jacket potato with tuna mayo. I was feeling peckish that day. I could have bought a sausage and egg bap if I'd wanted one. There's plenty of outdoor seating and you could even bring a picnic, I suppose. And this terrace looks down over the garden. As does the main house. Imagine having one of those apartments looking over this garden. Some steps leading down into the garden along a narrow path. These beds are absolutely jam-packed full of bulbs just waiting to emerge with a bit more warmer weather and as I say these beds in a month's time will be full of colour but for now we can enjoy these beautiful snowdrops. A less formal path around the edge of the main pond and a couple of quite tame moorhens. The rhododendron are in bud. Following the path round, we reach a tunnel and a gap between two rocks. Let's take this path first. It leads into a cool, dark, shady fernery, through which there's a babbling stream which feeds the main pond. Massive boulders covered in moss and plenty of steps. And look at that up there, a bridge. Some tree ferns. an area for sensitive plants and there's the source of the stream coming through the rocks. There's a massive stepping stone here which usually leads into the China garden but unfortunately today it was closed for maintenance. Let's go up the steps to the bridge. Probably not suitable unless you're very steady on your feet. Up and up to a vantage point where there is a bench which is quite appropriate because I did need a bit of a rest after all that climbing. Carefully back down. Look at these gunnery leaves from last season protecting the crowns. They will grow 10 feet this spring. And now into the tunnel. And out back into the light on the other side. A long, long winding path. Up quite a slope actually. And there's a little cottage. It's on two levels. Cheshire Cottage. Upstairs some information on plants and some botanical history.
and a window looking down over the path we've just walked up. Downstairs there's a corridor which is dark and gloomy but leads out into the light. It beckons you along and you emerge into this fascinating Egyptian style space. Great formality, great symmetry. And up there, a pyramid, as you would expect. Let's have a look at this castle turret. No, let's come back later. Let's go up this long path. One of those mile walks that used to be used for promenading or for riding horses. I've speeded the camera up here because it took 20 minutes to walk up this quite steep hill. And this path goes on and on beyond the boundary of the National Trust Garden, up into a local country park, right to the top. It's worth the walk because here is a massive urn, about 10 feet tall, and you get a sense of achievement looking back. And now a detour into a woodland walk. This runs parallel to that long formal path we've just walked up. It takes you through the woodland and there's plenty here for children, a fairy village. Quite mysterious, who lives here? And an adventure playground, suitable for children of all ages. Be careful on this one, quite wobbly. Steady. And a seesaw. I can't resist. And look there, a buried pipe. A hedgehog highway perhaps. Now we're back at the bottom of the hill and there's a pile of logs from these freshly cut trees. Left for wildlife. Some blackened bracken. Back at the bottom of the hill, and there's that lovely formal garden. Some beautiful shrubs. Now let's look at the castle turret. And look down there, an incredible formal path with bus trust you. Imagine clipping out. The U looks as if it's holding up the wall, but it isn't, of course. A lucky black cat. We're now almost at the same level as the roof of the house. It's terraced. And here's a small corridor which is given over to... Fossils. A nod to creation. That was some elephant, probably a mammoth. Winter colour. An arbour for climbing plants like clematis and honeysuckle. A second-hand bookshop and a rose garden. Now we find several different small rooms all divided up by these incredible yew hedges. Quite spectacular. Precision trimming. Imagine having to do that by hand. There must be an amazing team looking after these hedges here at Biddulph Grange. Each of these beds looks like bare soil, but I can assure you it isn't. Just beneath the surface there are thousands and thousands of bulbs. And I know because I've visited regularly they change and rotate these beds. I love a formal parterre. Each of these spaces is divided by these hedges and you go through a gap and lead yourself into the next one. There's a little water fountain. A 
now we're almost back where we started. Back at the top of the main pond. A font lined with lead. And some steps leading down to the water's edge. Was this used for swimming? Some enormous koi carp here. Apparently there was an otter which did eat some of the fish so it was moved away again. There's that moorhen again. And the final part of the visit is this beautiful winding lime walk which leads down to a gate. Now it says accessible exit here but I'm not sure that this garden is particularly suited for those who are not particularly good on their feet so I would exercise caution if I were you. And finally here is the kitchen garden. The produce from this garden is on sale during the summer months. And down here there are some baby fish to replenish the stock which was taken by the otter. Biddulph Grange Garden